guys, Rosie here, and this is week three for Transcribers FTN. Uh, welcome to Sexy Fridays with Rosie. Um, so, obviously this week's topic is sex, and I think I'll just kind of go chronologically. So I'll start talking about the, um, sorry, the progression of sort of changes in sex between before Jack started testosterone and, and um, kind of as it's evolved. So when I met Jack, he had not, st he had started the transition process, but he hadn't started testosterone. And um, at the time, I, would, I was very uncomfortable with my body sexually. And um, he, uh, having started going through transition, was becoming increasingly uncomfortable with, um, you know, anyone going below the belt, <clears throat> so to speak. Um, however, before, even before he began transitioning, he'd used toys, and he always preferred that. Um, he never liked really engaging in so-called lesbian sex, um, meaning, like, oral sex. Um, and, you know, fingering and stuff like that. Um, so he'd always preferred using prosthetics and um, so not that hadn't changed so much but definitely my own reluctance was something that um, was quite pronounced. Um, and after he started going on testosterone, which is when our sort of sexual relationship really picked up, um, the changes that were happening down below for him made him really reluctant to let me kind of uh, start going down there because he thought that I was going to think it was gross because his genitalia was becoming less conventional. Um, but I knew that, um, you know, once I went down there and he saw that I didn't think it was gross, you know, it would be a lot better. So one day we just kind of got it out of the way and that um, that really eradicated a lot of sort of our body issues with each other. Of course, you know, it's been a long process, especially for me to overcome my sort of um, sexual insecurities uh, and um, the difficulty of that kind of intimacy for me. But <clears throat> I have, and um, I think, so then I think the first part of my advice is stemming off of that, that, um, it, you know, especially if a guy is beginning his transition, there are going to be some insecurities. I mean, maybe there won't be, but most likely there will be. And the really important thing is to not just let things go. You know, a guy might be pretty dysphoric with what his breasts or his female um, genitals in the beginning, but that might change. You know, that if in the beginning when Jack said, no, I don't want you going down there, I just like dropped it and I hadn't, you know, continued to kind of check in weekly or whatever, um, then, you know, we never would have gotten past that. And, um, you know, I wasn't pressing, I wasn't pushy. But I just constantly checked in, and um, eventually, when we got past that kind of, you know, roadblock, um, sex really kind of opened up. So that was, I think, a really a really important thing to remember. Also, at the time, you know, when that happened, I think it really made us both realize that um, we were sort of in it together and we could get through all of our insecurities together and so that's really um you know that constant communication um checking in all the time and making sure each other are comfortable etc i think is a really fundamental part of developing like a healthy emotional relationship around sex as well um the dynamics of our sexual life uh were quite spontaneous we do have sex very frequently, um, and uh, Jack usually initiates um, 
but I do sometimes, you know, when I, when I want to, like, do something special or, you know, um, like, take him off guard or surprise him, you know, um, so I do sometimes, and I think that, you know, that kind of a dynamic, it's really good for, um, I mean, any couple in a sexual relationship to come up with sort of a dynamic like that, um, and really be comfortable in it, and not be like, oh gosh, Jack always initiates, but know that, like, I have a certain situation in which I initiate, and I'm comfortable with that, and I think that, you know, I mean, that's for any sexual relationship, really. Um, I'm not really into porn, but Jack likes it, so we sometimes incorporate it. Um, we use a lot of toys. We have a really good sex shop nearby where Jack lives and I go to school um, <clears throat> called Oh My. It's in Northampton in Western Massachusetts, so if anyone lives near there, it's a really excellent store. It's very small and personable and um, high quality. There's like, no stigma. It's not creepy. It's a really wonderful place. And I'd say, you know, um, it's really, really important um, if you're looking to have sex with a trans guy that you find a really good sex store that you feel comfortable in and the people are really nice and, um, you know, they have products that you like and uh, want to use, etc. Um, because first of all, that can give you ideas for things that you never thought of. And second of all, it's just going to make it a lot easier for you to experiment and feel comfortable um, in kind of learning your way around um, this kind of new way to have sex. Um, and, uh, sorry I keep looking down, but I have my answers, questions and answers written, <laughs> written down here. Um, uh, let's see, I'd say that, um, Jack and I don't have, you know, this idea of lesbian sex. Uh, lesbian sex takes place between two women. Um, I think that, you know, there are a lot of ways that two women have sex with each other, and the fact is that they're two women, and that's what makes it lesbian sex. Uh, not the specific things they do. Jack and I have very queer sex. There's really no no-go zones on either of us, and, um, we experiment and do new things and, you know, um, <clears throat> I'd say it's definitely outside the box. Um, we've experimented with role-playing and, um, dominance and submission and all of these things. Uh, and I recommend it for anyone, even if it feels kind of uncomfortable, um, because, you know, maybe you won't like it. That's the case with anything. Maybe you won't like it and then you shouldn't continue it. But maybe you will, and it can really make sex a lot more interesting. Um, and, uh, how's my time doing? Ooh, okay. I guess, overall, my advice is, be really open. Always communicate. Don't drop issues when they come up. Give them time. Maybe in the end, you know, things aren't gonna happen, you know, below the belt with your man or whatever. Um, but just always be communicating. And, um, <clears throat> be willing to try new things. If you don't like them, you don't have to do them anymore. Um, but if you do like them, it could be like this really exciting new discovery for you. So, um, also, honestly, well, first, find a good sex store. I mean, I guess I've already said that, but find a good sex store. That's important. But I guess the last thing I want to say is, it's not a challenge learning how to have sex with a trans man. It's an opportunity. Because honestly, you can do so much more with a trans man than with either a bio-female or a bio-male. So many more options. So much more fun. You can expand so much more. Um, I mean, you know, so look at it that way. Or try to look at it that way. You know, it's just, that's like, there's, there's so many more options. And it can be just, like, way more exciting than usual. So... I'll sign off with that, and um, I'll see you all next week.